Well, hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Today we're going to take a look at this kind of cool little hand-drawn animation style effect. I think you'll really like it. Uh, let's just jump into the tutorial and check it out and learn how to do a thing or two in Photoshop. All right, well, as I said, a, a little bit of a sketch effect here, this sort of animated sketch effect in Photoshop. You saw an example of it a moment ago. And the, for me, it all begins with a stock photo. You can do this with any object you like, but a water buffalo, a bull, come on, pretty cool. I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool and just loop a selection around the bottom bull here. I don't need the guy over black. And I'm going to say, hey, image crop to just cut away everything else and then select deselect to get rid of my selection. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and just make this a little bit smaller. It looks like it's pretty small, but we are only at 25% if you can see that down there. So I'm actually going to zoom us into 100% and then go image, image size. And the width is 4,000 pixels. Let's knock it down to 2,000 just to make things a little more manageable here. All right, now I'm going to just click on the little unlock icon there for this layer. And I'm going to set the opacity of this layer to maybe about 50% just so I can see a rough outline. That's all I really need. And I'm going to hit my little half black, half white circle and add a gradient fill layer. And what I'm going to do is choose, I've got this kind of bluish uh, blue to blue or teal to teal type gradients. Gonna hit OK, and I think I'm gonna set it to an angle of negative 90, something like that, and maybe even drag this down a little bit to get more of my darker uh, blues involved, and I'll also dither it here, and I'm gonna hit OK. I'm gonna drag the bull up on top of this, and then I'm going to create a new layer. Here's where we're gonna go ahead and bring in the Wacom tablet, the wonderful Wacom, and what I'm gonna do is grab my brush tool, and I'll probably open up my brush panel. This is the brush settings, um, but something like that is good enough. I'm gonna begin with a pretty big brush. So I've got a 30 pixel hard edged brush. You can see here's the size, 30 pixels, and the hardness is at 100%. You probably wanna roll with 100% hardness here. I'm gonna make this even bigger though. I'm gonna push it up closer, probably to 100. Maybe let's go 80, 85. Here I've got shape dynamics ticked on because I am using my Wacom tablet. So the control is gonna be pen pressure, which is gonna just give me a little more variation on my strokes. That's that's fine. Uh, and I can close this guy off and I'm going to paint with my foreground color set to black. And all I want to do is just quickly draw these lines all around the bull, just like this until I get just, I loop completely around him. So you can undo a stroke here or there and just go over it very, very loosely. You can be as precise or as loose as you want. I'm choosing to be pretty, pretty loose here, uh, and that's totally fine. And also attack it from multiple sides. So I'm drawing a little bit here on the right side, then I'm drawing a little bit here on the left side. Make sure I get his little uh, chin down there, and then I'm going to get the nostrils, and I'll probably also just get sort of the brow line, just like that. So now if I shut off the bull, we've got this very rough outline of the bull on this layer. That's great, but what I want to do as well is add a lot of fine uh, fine little strokes around this to really make it look a little more sketchy and and just rough so I could right click here and make the size of my brush much smaller and draw with this and just begin you know creating all these like sort of sketch lines like this so the, the idea is for it to be very very rough now I'm going to tell you why I'm not going to do this in this step but I'm, I am going to complete this first one because I've, I've started here so we'll just go through and just sketch 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 it doesn't matter how wild or crazy you go and and really, the size of the sketches doesn't even matter. Like the, if you want to go with a ton of really thin lines or you want to do a thick and thin mixture like I'm doing here, you can really do whatever you like. Anything works for this particular style. So something like that. Now, the reason I don't normally like to do this is because you're going to be switching between two brushes a lot. 17 pixel brush and an 82 pixel brush. So what I would recommend is just... Do all of your sketches with the thick lines first and then go back over the layers and you do the thin lines. Now, why am I talking about multiple layers? Well, because we're going to shut off layer one and we're going to do that exact process we just did nine more times. We need to create 10 of those layers. So here on layer two, I'm going to just go over and do the same exact thing. So we'll go over and trace over this guy. Now, one thing you may want to do, you can enter back into your brush panel and turn on smoothing. And that's going to turn on this smoothing option out here. And that'll allow you to get a different style of line where you can just pull through and get very, very smooth lines, right? And just have the brush sort of slow down a little bit for you and just go through and get some different lines. It wouldn't hurt to do a couple of your layers with the really smooth lines. Maybe you really love the smooth line effect and you wanna do all of them with smooth lines. I guess that's fine too, but I don't really like the smooth line effect quite as much, even though I am finishing my layer two 
with the smooth lines and then I'll create a new layer and really I'm just going to speed up the video at this point and knock out the rest of these and I'll be back in just a second when we're ready to kind of make the brush a little bit smaller and uh, just go in and really detail out these lines a little bit more. And there we are back just as if it took no time at all. Now, instead of previewing all of the sketching that I just did, uh, we're gonna go ahead and knock out the bull layer and begin the animation so we can just kind of check it out and see what this really looks like uh, start to finish. So I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna select the bull. I think I actually want it to be part of our composition. So I'm just gonna shut off that layer one sketch. No sketches on top of the bull. Reset the opacity to 100%. And let's go for knocking out all of the white here. Uh, a few different ways we can do this. Uh, what I'm going to do is just use my magic wand tool and click once to select sort of all the white. And then go select, select and mask. And let's try to knock all of that out so we can see there's the bull. Let's go ahead and invert this whole thing real quick. And you can see we're getting a lot of this kind of defringing down here. Uh, well, not defringing, fringing that needs to be defringed, I should say. Now, we're not really concerned about the integrity of these edges all that much. I just don't want this kind of big, you know, haloiness happening. So let's first of all smooth this a lot. Let's feather it a bunch as well. And then we're going to contrast it inward a bit to just kind of suck that line in and then shift the edge in quite a bit, just kind of until the bulk of it's gone. Again, the bull, most of this edge is going to be covered with all of that sketching and those lines that we created. So just having it kind of nice and clean like this will work great for us. We don't need to worry about decontaminate colors. We're just going to output this to a layer mask. No new layers, nothing like that. Hit OK. And now we have a nice clean selection of our bull. You can see there's the layer mask for him. And we're seeing around the bull all of this blue background. One exception would be there's a little bit of white junk there, but we're not going to worry about that. All right, before we begin the uh, animation, the last thing before we actually begin is we just want to invert all of our sketching lines from white or from black to white. We sketched them in black because it was just easier to see. So you can select each layer and just hit command or control I. That's going to just flip it to white. So we have these nice white lines happening on top of our, uh, our top, on top of our photo here. So it's real, a real quick little process here of just turning the layers on and just command or control I all the way through. Make sure you can turn it on, select the layer, command or control I, voila. All right, we, uh, we want to shut all these layers off. I'm going to pull my layers panel down a little bit so we can see a little bit more of it. Make sure you select the top layer 10, hold down shift and select all the way back to layer two, and then just hit the com command comma key. So that's control comma for the PC. It's just going to hide those layers. Now, before before we do this, I want to I want to make the bull blend with our background a little more. So he's, he's kind of sticking out there a little bit too much. So select the gradient fill layer, hold down alter option, drag that gradient up on top of the bull, and then we want to clip it to the layer beneath using the hotkey command option G. That's control alt G on the PC. And we're going to set this layer to the blend mode of color. And I will reduce the opacity of this color, uh, this color layer, I should call it, to about 50%. And then we're going to duplicate it, Command or Control J. We're going to need to clip it again, so Command Option G, that's Control Alt G on the PC. And this layer we're going to set to the blend mode of overlay and crank the opacity back to 100%. So now the bull is looking pretty blue. He still carries some of his original colors through, but he definitely fits with the scene a bit more. And our animated lines are going to dance around uh, the outline of this bull's head. All right, let's go window, timeline. Here's where the animation happens. My timeline's hidden way down here, and it's huge. Uh, you really don't need to see your document for this. It's going to be a pretty simple frame animation. From the dropdown, you could go video timeline. We don't want that. We want to make sure we create the frame animation and click the button. There we go. And what I have here is uh, this is zero seconds. This is how much time is going to elapse for this frame. I want to say no delay, zero seconds. I don't want 0 0.1 or two. You could do 0 0.1, I guess, but no delay I think looks the best. So I'm going to stick with no delay. And here's our first frame of our animation is our first sketch. Great. I'm going to hit the new button. That's going to create another frame. And all I need to do is shut off layer one and turn on layer two and then create another frame, shut off layer two, turn on layer three, sh uh, create another frame, shut off layer three, turn on layer four, create another frame. And you can see here where we're going. We're going to have 10 frames for our animation. It's going to look pretty wild. I'm going to go ahead and create the seventh frame. And that means I'm turning on layer seven, of course. Create the eighth frame, turn on layer eight, shut off layer seven. I'm just shutting off all the other layers so we just have our one sketch it's going to jump from sketch to sketch to sketch just like that all right so now if i go ahead and play this you're going to see the effect that we're getting it's this dancing hand-drawn effect 
it's so super fun and so super easy to do. So at this point, of course, you could make it even more uh, complex by maybe doing 20 of these layers or adding additional layers of the small sketching or just doing a better job with the sketching than I did maybe it would be a start. But we're just try trying to get through this quick, quick, quick. Uh, so once we have our animation laid out like this, right? So we just play through it and we've got our lines dancing around looking nice. Uh, we want to export this. We want to share it on Twitter. Or we're going to share it on Facebook or on our Instagram or wherever. Uh, we want to export this as an animated GIF. So I'm going to say export. Uh, for GIFs, I still like to go to the old Save for Web Legacy dialog box. I just like it the most. And you can see here, we can choose a GIF from the file type. And I'm going to leave everything the way it is. I do want the max colors, which is 256. Um, with the gradient in the background, you're going to see some little stepping and things like that. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the most important thing is down here under animation looping options. We want to make sure we set it to loop forever. Uh, the other alternative is once or other. You can specify you want it to loop five times or something like that. But forever, it just means that anytime anyone sees it, if they leave it on their screen for a year, it will just keep looping and looping and looping and doing that drawing effect. It's a perfect seamless loop. And you would go ahead and hit save. And here on my desktop, I'll just save it as bull sketching dot gif or gif. Go ahead and save and you will have exported your animation from Photoshop that easily. In fact, I can jump out to my desktop, I can hit that little GIF, preview it, and there we go. Animating and dancing just like it should be. So there you have it. As I said, pretty simple, pretty easy to do, but a whole lot of fun. If you did enjoy this tutorial, make sure you hit the red button. There's an example of it, but don't just hit the red button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the little bell which will turn on your notifications so every time a Photoshop tutorial like this goes out, you'll get a little notification. I appreciate your support so much. So for learning a little bit about the brush tool, some different layers, and timeline animation here in Adobe Photoshop, that's it. Get it, got it, good. NathanoDodsonTutfield.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.